welcome to Izzy's Crafty Bees. I'm just going to hang around and see if anybody spots the tan live. And let's just see. Well, nobody's jumping on to join me, so I will. I'm hoping I'm live. Fingers crossed. I've got the red button saying that I'm live, so I will just um, talk to myself for a short while and um, hope that somebody joins me during this session. But if not, I'm sure you'll watch on Catch Up or Playback later. So, hello and welcome to Izzy's Crafty Bees. I'm Izzy Shishinsky and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the UK, in North Nottinghamshire to be precise, near the market town of Retford. Thank you for joining me this Tuesday lunchtime. Um, I'm going to share with you today three simple techniques for using those fantastic um, Stampin' Up! soft pastels that we have in the annual catalogue this year. Um, but before I do the demonstration, I will also share with you three things that have made me happy this week, as I always do, because I like to be positive. It's in my nature. So the three things that have made me happy since I last broadcast, and I didn't broadcast last week because I actually visited family in Skipton. So I went to stay with my mum and went to see my little niece, Alice. Well, she's not so little now. She turned 10 last Monday. So I um, hopped up on up to Skipton and spent some time with my brother, sister-in-law, my two nieces and my mum. So that made me enormously happy. I spent some time with my bestie on Sunday. We walked her son's dog in the beautiful sunshine. That also made me happy. And we crafted together, so that was fantastic. Um, and I've been back to my dancing class on a Tuesday, which is why I'm broadcasting live on a Tuesday lunchtime. Now, I can see that three people are watching. However, I can't see who they are, so that makes me think that you haven't previously watched me. So, hello. To whoever's watching and you haven't um, connected with me or liked my page because you're not showing as a friend kind of up in the top corner there so if you enjoy what you're watching and you want to um, connect then please like my page on Facebook if you're watching on playback on YouTube later then please give me a like if you enjoy the video and subscribe to my channel. It's incredibly helpful. It helps to keep YouTube um, free to air and free to use. Um, so that would be great. So thank you. I'm going to just switch my camera around. I'm going to pop my glasses on so I can see which button it is. Oh, hi, Beth. I can see that Beth's there now. Hello. Um, one is me. Hello. And now your face has popped up. So that's great. I can see you. <laughs> How funny. So I'm going to swing my camera around and let's do this. Let me just bear with me with the wiggly wigglies and let's get my camera in position. So let me see what I can see on my desk. Okay, so I'm just going to run through my host code for the moment. So if you have um, not shopped with me previously or if you do shop with me online because you don't live local to me here's when you where you can find me and my shop and if you place an order for over 25 pounds please use this host code when prompted and what that will enable me to do is to send you a free gift the following month so that's really helpful so please use this host code this is also a saved um, pinned post on my Facebook page so don't worry about pausing just now just go back to my Facebook page now if you're watching um, after the event and it could be some weeks or months after always visit my Facebook page to find the current host code because this code changes monthly okay and you can find me on social media by using the at sign and then just Izzy's Crafty Bees. You don't need to pop that bit in, just pop in that at sign, uh, Izzy's Crafty Bees, to search for me on any social media platforms. That's Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. So that's that bit over. Let's have a look at what we're going to do today. So I'm going to show you these two cards. Um, they both also use, handily, I've kept it to sort of one bundle so one stamp set the artistically inked stamp set 
with the artistic dies that match and they're available as a bundle in the annual catalogue. I'm also just going to bring in a tiny amount of the designer series paper for this card here. So I'm only going to use a tiny amount of the designer series paper but also in the same suite, the artistically inked suite, we have some designer series paper and we have some accessories that are called uh, a, an ephemera pack and I will be dipping into this just to accessorise this card. So that's what we're going to be using along with the soft pastels assortment. So let me just show you this assortment. We have a collection of colours. I'm going to just read from the pack what those colours are. So we have um, Daffodil Delight. This will be Mango Melody. Let me have a look. Probably got mine out of order now. So Daffodil Delight, Mango Melody, Poppy Parade. Um, yes, Gorgeous Grape, Mossy Meadow. Um, Oh, can't see for looking. Coastal Cabana, Granny Apple Green and Knight of Navy. Now they don't look exactly like the colours on the ink pads or indeed on the marker. So for example, I was to bring in, let me see, this one, which I think is this one, Mango Melody, just looks slightly different. It looks slightly more orangey, although now looking at it on camera, it actually does look pretty similar, but when you first open these, you may not recognise, for example, this one as Knight of Navy. However, they are those colours. So, these are soft pastels. They feel, they're square, they feel quite dense and they feel quite chalky. So, they don't feel sort of soft like a lipstick, for example. They feel pretty chalky. And I had some soft pastels before I um, discovered Stampin' Up, so a different make, and I used to use them in scrapbooking, mainly for backgrounds and bits and pieces of um, uh, mixed media projects. So I wanted to just show you a couple of applications for card making, as that's what we primarily do. Um, so I'm going to yeah just give you a couple of different techniques. Now I've actually got three techniques that I'm going to show you. I've got two techniques on this card and one of those techniques I actually didn't use to make this card but I'm going to use to show you and I've got one technique for this card. I'm going to start with this one. This is the easiest technique and it's really very simple. I'm going to take a seat so I can't just see um, comments for the moment but I will stand up and glance to see if I've got any comments as I go through the project. So I've already gone ahead and pre-cut and scored my um, cardstock. So for this card I've chosen to use um, polished pink. Now you could use any coordinating um, card stock colour for your base card. When I say coordinating, we don't have a pink in the set. And when I was actually making this sample, it was World Card Making Day, I think, and my friend and team member, Helen, was disappointed that there isn't actually a pink in here. So I suggested that you just make a card in a shade of pink, and then you use your soft pastels to make the background. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So I've cut and scored my regular size card base. I've made a black layer mat. I've made a white mat. And then I've got myself some whisper white. No, 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 basic white, not whisper white. Um, in order to stamp and cut my images of the flower from. But I'm going to get straight on and show you the first technique and the first technique is for this beautiful background and it couldn't be simpler I'm using the Plenty of Patterns decorative masks I'm going to pull these out this is a set of masks or stencils that we have um, and I'm actually going to get let me just grab um, let's see I've got a piece of just some white scrap card so I can actually show you the patterns and it's a set of four masks but actually it's a set of um, seven masks really so we have this pretty floral mask 
we have this geometric mask if anybody saw my post of customer um, carrier bag the other day this was the geometric pattern that I used for the background we have this fish scale which is the one I'm going to use and then this one has four patterns that you can use that are like mandalas or doilies um, and you can choose to use them individually and I did actually do one individual one just to actually show you using this technique so that's just one of those small ones now I'm going to use this fish scale one so that's a set of decorative masks and they're available in the annual catalogue and I will try and remember to show you the pages once I've actually finished the card so I'm actually going to place my piece my wisp my basic white layer just straight down onto my desk I'm going to place the mat over the top and I don't think there's a right or wrong way up for the mask and I'm actually going to just anchor it to my desk using some really old washi tape now I've got um, my desk surface is actually fablon so that's sort of what do we call it sticky back plastic in old money um, so I can actually stick this straight to the desk surface without damaging anything and I'm just holding it there with washi just to anchor it and I'm going to then bring out let me just grab a piece now I'm going to use I was going to use my silicone mat but it's actually left the premises I don't know where my silicone mat's gone I have hunted high and low it will be stuck to the bottom of something somewhere but I don't know where it is so I'm just going to use some of these non-stick um, craft surface and I'm going to use the Coastal Cabana colour soft pastel and I'm also going to use my take your pick tool and I'm going to use the palette knife end this is the end that turns around and you can turn it into a a pricking or pointy tool, pokey tool. I'm going to use the palette knife end and I'm going to scrape off an amount of the pastel into a nice little pile. Onto my non-stick mat, I'm going to pop the pastel back in its holder. Um, and I'm going to be using that just to the side. Let me just see what's in shot on the camera. Probably not quite in shot, so let's go over to this side. I'm just going to use that just to one side. And I'm going to actually use my blending brush. Now, when I first picked up my blending brush to do this technique, I was a little bit worried that um, I'd been using it for ink and would the ink transfer through the pastel. But I have used a microfiber cloth and I'm using one of these spongy ones like a microfiber cloth and I just clean my blending brushes using my microfiber cloth and that transfers any surplus ink or any surplus pastel onto the cloth. I have not washed any of my brushes since I purchased them. They're just here. I try and keep one for sort of blues and greens, one for pinks purples and reds and one for yellows and oranges it just kind of keeps them separate but to be honest I'm quite pleased with these they don't transfer any colour so let me just take a seat and all I'm going to do is pick up the um, pastel onto the brush and I'm going to make um, that background that blended background I'm not applying a great deal of pressure, I'm just moving that pastel around and what I found with these pastels, I mean I love my blended brushes and I love doing blended backgrounds, completely love it, I think it's so super, but what I found with the pastels is it's much softer and um, you don't get that kind of splodge like you do with ink you have to be careful with the ink and kind of start off the page and just be really careful not to get any dark splodges now you can work this so it's more concentrated in the middle and then just work it out to the outside 
it's really quite a, a lovely satisfying and I'm just going to move all of that excess I've got quite a bit of excess there I'm just going to move that out of harm's way and like I say I'm just going to clean off my brush using my microfiber cloth and the reason we use a microfiber cloth is obviously we don't want the brush to pick up any filaments or any bits of fluff if we're going to then be dabbing it into an ink pad we want it to um, stay nice and clean so and that's not transferring anything I've just put hand cream on so if that was going to transfer colour my hand would look like Shrek now but that's not transferring any colour and I'm just going to give that just a blow <sighs> you do need to sort of take care that you don't pick up the pastels on your fingers because they can transfer and I would say they're a, um, a messy product in a nice way <sighs> I'm going to give that a bit of a blow and I'm simply going to brush away any excess. And let's just. And you can see that just a gentle brush over, it's not smudging or smearing anything, it's just a really lovely soft finish. And as for cleaning my mask, instead of running it under the tap, um, as I would do with a wet ink. I'm just going to give that a wipe also with my microfiber cloth both sides just give it a bit of a wipe and that should take any excess off. I'm just going to pop those masks to one side ready to tidy away. So that's my first technique using the pastels. I've just got a blob there and I think in fact that's a blob of something moist maybe when I blew I think maybe I just blew a little bit um, excessively. So that's my um, first technique using the soft pastels. Really easy and really simple but beautiful blended background effect. Really lovely for those blended backgrounds with your um, blending brushes. Really happy with that. So I'm going to go on, let me bring back the original card, I'm going to go on now and just build the rest of the card. So we're going to do some stamping and some die cutting and just some assembly. Um, so let's get cracking. I've got my card base, I've got my white layer and I've got my black layer. So I'm going to first of all just mount my white onto my black layer and I can see that I've got a bit of a ragged edge there. So I'm going to use my favourite liquid glue and it should be a fairly straightforward card this. So I can see it's pretty quiet this lunchtime. I don't think I've got too many people watching me live, if any. I'm not sure if mum's just hopped on. So hi mum, hope you had a good art class. Um, so that's that and I'm going to do some stamping now with the artistically inked stamp set and I'm going to use this sort of smallest rose image. So this stamp set was designed to look like the alcohol um, ink type imagery and this one I really like. It's like a small rose um, and I'm also going to use both sets of leaves. So there's a double leaf and a single leaf which I'm going to use. Let's have the double leaf on a block and the single leaf on a smaller block. And then we've got these three single flowers that are actually on one stamp and I'm going to pop those on and just have an extra pop of colour. So I'm going to stamp all of my images on one little piece of basic white and I'm going to use polished pink. For my flower so I'm going to my stamping technique as always just in case I have any beginners is tap 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 and then I'm going to put the stamp straight down onto the piece of cardstock and just hold it there when I teach beginners I always say breathe in and breathe out and then just lift it straight up and you've got a perfectly stamped image and I'm just wondering whether I'm actually in shot there I'm just going to adjust my camera a little bit Let's just bring that a bit further forward. 
so I'm not having to lean right over. Apologies for the wobble, but I think that that might just help things. So that's my um, pretty rose. I'm now going to just grab some Granny Apple Green ink for the leaves. And I think that's what I used on the original card. I could be wrong, but it doesn't matter. It's a pretty shade of green. So tap, tap, tap. I always then have a glance, make sure my stamp is inked nicely and then place my stamp down. No rocking and rolling, no wobbling. Just place it down, put some even pressure on the back and lift it straight up. The same with the single leaf. Tap, tap, tap. Not squidge, squidge, squidge. You don't need to pretend to be doing CPR. It's literally just tap, tap, tap. Straight down, a little bit of pressure and straight up beautiful images. Now I've just spotted that this ink pad's been a bit naughty and I've got a bit of leakage so I'm going to just stop that before it goes any further. Give that a bit of a wipe and then we can pop that away. And I'm going to go in for um, Coastal Cabana the same colour as the background and I'm going to just stamp those three little flowers so again tap 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 straight down straight up now what I will do just for the purposes of demonstrating in case I do have any beginners watching is I'm going to show you how not to stamp it so if you go squidge 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 really hard and then we put it down and we rock it and roll it we get all of this. Now that's a very exaggerated um, demonstration, but if you press too hard on your ink pad, what happens is you get ink all around on the stamp. You can see on the stamp the image is raised and you get ink all around the edges. And if you press down too hard or you rock and roll, we get this halo around the image. So if we just tap, tap, tap lightly and we go straight down, a little bit of pressure, and straight up, oh, a little bit of pressure, and straight up we get that lovely stamped image. So no rocking and rolling, no CPR on the ink pad, and you'll end up with beautifully stamped images, crisp and clear every single time. So I'm going to die cut all of these images using the matching dies from the artistic dies set and in this set we get this gorgeous long leaf we get this big die which i'm going to use for the next card but we also get this outline we get this outline and we get two leaves um, and i'm going to go ahead and cut those i'm going to actually bring in my little machine i think let me bring in the mini So I'm bringing in my stamping cut and emboss mini machine. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to use the um, number one um, platform and I'm going to use a bottom platform which we cut onto and I'm going to stagger those plates just there and now I'm going to position my dies in place. Now what I would usually do is cut them all together but just sometimes they jump so I'm going to try and just cut the do two passes through the machine I'm going to do the double leaf and the flower to start with I'm going to just stagger that top plate and give it a good pinch while I get it started and I'm going to transfer my hand to the top and I can see already that that's moved, so I'm going to just bring that back out. And this is what sometimes happens if you try and just do all of your cuts together in one pass. Is especially in the mini machine, there's quite a bit of movement laterally, you know, just side to side. So it's worth just keeping your eye on what you're doing. And sometimes you can use a bit of washi tape or even um, a post-it sticker to hold things down. Let me just see whether I cut through. I didn't quite cut 
all the way through that one. So let's just, and actually in the interest of speed, let's, as we're going to washi tape everything down, let's just place the other dies. Now when you're using washi tape to actually anchor your dies, remember to put the washi tape to the outside and not on the inside, otherwise you risk just pulling up the image once it's passed through. Let's just see if we can anchor those in place and let's go again. That should work just fine now. There we go. to one side and now we can lift our pieces and we've got our flower, our double leaf, our little mini flowers and our single leaf and we can just pop the dies safely back. Let me just take those out. Just pop all of that scrap in the bin and we're just going to, in fact, instead of popping them back just to save time, I'll just pop them on my magne magnetic whiteboard rubber so that they don't drop on the floor. And then we can get on and finish our card. I'm going to heat emboss the sentiment from the stamp set. We've got this lovely, bold, happy birthday in the stamp set. So I'm going to get that out and I'm going to mount it on a block. And I'm going to heat emboss it in white embossing. And I'm going to use my embossing buddy just to reduce the static because it's white on black and we just want to reduce any blobs. So I'm going to reach for my Versamark ink and my white embossing powder and of course my heat embossing gun. I'm just reading comments. Mum's been walking up the hill whilst watching me in the middle of town. Gosh, so this is the same stamping technique. It's tap, tap, tap. This is a clear sticky ink and I'm going to stamp that straight down. I've got a feeling this might be wonky because I can't get my head right over the actual piece of cardstock. I think I might have got away with that. And then I'm going to sprinkle the embossing powder over the sticky ink. I'm going to take care not to touch the embossing powder until after it's set, tapping off any excess on the back. I'm just going to give that a flick from behind. And I'm going to set the embossing powder using my heat tool. I'm just going to carefully take that little bit off there because I could just see a little bit. Now I'm going to use a an old wooden um, clothes peg just to hold that so I don't burn my fingers. I'm going to apply some heat and set that um, embossing powder. And you will see it just change. going to finish the end of that sentiment just with a diagonal end just for interest it just makes it look a little bit more interesting and now we've got all of our elements we can go ahead and complete our card so first of all I'll stick my layer down my mats and layers down and I will go in with um, my favorite multi-purpose liquid glue as always I say this to you every time it just gives you that little bit of glide or wiggle room. So once you've actually popped that down, you can just give it a wiggle and make sure that you're straight and you've got equal distance all around. There we are. And I'm going to just build my focal point with my flower. 
I'm going to actually stick my flower on with Stamping Dimensionals. This, These are the foam pads that give it a bit of a rise so I can then poke all the other elements underneath. So I'm going to start this time with my focal point with my flower and I'm actually just going to use one dimensional right in the middle and that will give me those edges so that I can actually feed in my other elements and I just decide which way up I want that rose. I'm going straight into the middle and stick that down. Nothing difficult there. Um, I will just take a moment to think about where my sentiment's going so that my leaves don't come too far down. So I will actually stick my sentiment on and for that I'm going to use the black dimensionals and I seem to only have the mini ones on my desk. These black dimensionals come in an assorted pack so you get a sheet, I can't remember how many sheets, you certainly get the small ones and the large ones in the same pack anyway, rather than the white dimensionals that come in either the regular size or the mini size. The black dimensionals are great when you've got a dark layer that you're sticking down. So let's go ahead and pop that sentiment just down here. That should do. And then we can just pop these leaves. And I'm going to just have a quick um, look through. Well, I am if I can find it. This is what happens every time I get everything out. And then I put things down onto, oh, here we are. So I've got the pack of ephemera, which includes some lovely sequins. And these are self-adhesive sequins in sort of an iridescent colour. Um, and they don't have a hole in the middle. And I'm actually going to change the colour of those. And we also have these sheets of gold laser cut pieces and we've got all sorts of different pieces I mean I could have put something like this behind the flower something geometric I want some of the gold leaves so I'm just going to have a look and see what I've got left in my pack so you get quite a few sheets of these so I'm going to go and have this gold leaf they just pop out because they've already been laser cut so I'm going to go and have that double leaf and I think I might just steal, let's have a look, on this sheet I've actually got this nice sprig, I think I'll have a sprig on this card and I might have a small leaf. Let's just pop that out. I'll have that small leaf as well and I might just trim that one down. Oops. Let's pop all those bits. They come with tissue paper in between. And to be honest, I just found myself... <laughs> they all fall out. I just found myself a bigger plastic bag so I could just pop them all back in. And I save all of these little pieces because they're useful just as highlights on other cards projects so let's pop those back in now before I start to stick down let me show you how I can change the colour so I've got um, a stamping blend in melon mambo which is another bright pink and I'm just going to use the and these are alcohol markers I'm going to use the fine end and I'm just going to colour three of these sequins and then that should dry really quickly and then that will make the sequins stand out a bit. I've also got, so if I go in with um, Bermuda Bay, which is another turquoise blue, I could colour in maybe a couple in Bermuda Bay and it would just make them, you can see the difference when I pop them, just see if that's dark, I'm going with the brush end. I think this is maybe a bit of an old marker. So you can just see a slight difference with the Bermuda Bay in the pink and we'll pop those on but we'll leave those to dry just there and we'll go ahead and I'm going to actually separate the gold leaves and really simple to stick these on just one blob of glue behind and just give that a press and a bob blob of glue behind this gold, um, green one and pop that down at the bottom. I like to go diagonally 
when I'm decorating. I think I'm going to go with that sprig, perhaps up at the top. Maybe one sprig and one gold leaf at the top. And again, I'm just going to use a little bit of glue. Now, because these foil accent pieces from the ephemera are quite, they've got quite a slippy, I want of a better word, quite a slippy back on them. You can actually peel them a little bit. You can peel some of the backing away and that will give you a more absorbent surface for the glue to adhere to. And I'm going to just take off that and then put my glue onto that bit there that's exposed and that will be a bit more, um, and what's the word, absorbent so the glue will actually sink in rather than it sitting on top of the shiny surface. I'm going to use this piece. It's the same with the sprigs, it's the same backing, but I'm not going to faff because I know that once I leave my card to one side it will that glue will stick. And I think what I'll do here is maybe let's just pop that under and see what that looks like. I'll stick that together as a pair. And then we'll finish off with these little flowers. Slide under there. Oops. Taking care, I'm taking care, she said. I just need my tweezers now. Taking care with my chubby fingers not to slide the glue along the foil because then that leaves a sticky mess on the foil. So if you've got, like me, chubby fingers or fingers that are not working, I have just broken so many nails. I've been gardening and then I did some vacuuming and every time I go to empty my vacuum cleaner, I break a nail on the cylinder, the cylindrical piece that you have to pull off oh oh I did swear sorry mum but I did I think those little flowers just finish that off it gives an extra pop of colour and then we'll go and pop some of those sequins on and I'm using just my snips to pick these sequins up you can use your take the pick take your pick tool and I'll just scatter these sequins Around. Let's go for one of those blue ones, put one of those up there, one down there, and maybe just finish off because we like an odd number. Same but different, ever so slightly. Let me just put my tweezers back. And let me just clear some of these bits away and I'm going to just, you can probably not see it on camera, but I did just finish this one with some black speckles just to pick up on this black layer behind. So I just used my black, uh, basic black Stampin' Right marker. So this is just your normal water-based dye ink inside and I used the brush end with the top and I just flicked the ink to cause a splatter and I think the camera will probably pick that one up a bit better. This one I was a bit light um, so let me lift that up to the camera. Let's pop those sequins away because we don't need those for the next card I don't think. Let me just lift this camera up. So I th this camera, this card up to the camera even. I think you can pick out those black speckles. Now and that just finishes that background. So that's the first technique using those soft pastels as a background using a mask or a, um, what did we call these? What did we call these? Yes. Yes, it was a decorative mask using a decorative mask or a stencil and of course you can use your die cuts 
if you've got a fancy die cut you can use your die cut pieces as well as a mask so don't forget that but they work these soft pastels work so beautifully with the blending brushes so if you've bought the blending brushes and you may be struggling to blend those beautiful backgrounds using ink um, then I can recommend the soft pastels that works beautifully so let's have a look at the second card so let's just move those two out of the way for the moment let's have a look at the second card and for this card I've used two different techniques one's messy and one's less so messy um, so for this card I've used granny apple green as my base regular size card I've cut and scored that I've also cut a piece of basic white for my next layer and I've just trimmed off a piece of the designer series paper and it's this beautiful one with the gold foil stripes and I just thought that that would give us a bit of extra pattern um, almost feels like texture down the side so I'm going to glue that down the side I'm going to use some gold ribbon round the card itself um, let me just check I think yes I use that completely round the card front no tricks there and I need a piece of basic white for my sentiment and I've also used just straightforward basic white and for this one I've pre die cut this piece from the um, artistic dies um, I pre cut it just so that you didn't have to see me use the machine and poke all the little bits out just to save a bit of time so for this technique we'll just pop those bits to one side for this technique I'm going to bring back let me just carefully get rid of that I'm going to actually get rid of this spare um, pastel don't worry about throwing it look how much there's still left don't worry if you scrape off too much these pastels will last you for years so I'm going to get rid of that excess um, pastel into the bin I'm going to lay out my craft sheet in full and I'm also going to get myself a couple of layers of kitchen towel and I'm going to pop down my die cut piece pulling my sleeves up <laughs> and I'm going to pick some colours out I'm going to use the granny apple green I'm going to use the gorgeous grape I'm going to use the uh, poppy parade colours and I'm very simply going to add the colour to the piece with the flat of the pastel so I'm just going to go in and colour the piece in the areas I want with the colours I want just with the flat of the pastel just taking care not to tear the die cut and you can go more concentrated in different areas I'm just going to move to a different piece of towel now well, I add a different colour. So you can see I'm going to go in with the green. Actually, I used two greens on this one. I'm taking my time, taking care because I don't want to tear anything. And these pieces are quite delicate. Quite, I've torn that one off completely now. Can you see they are delicate. So you just take your time. I can rescue it and I think actually I might well have torn the top off one of them previously it looks like I have done we can hold on to that piece let's go in oops and I think I also went in with the darker green just towards the base of the leaves And you don't have to be too precise with anything just careful and then let's add some of that lovely purple from the gorgeous grape and I'm doing all of this in one 
application if that makes sense I'm not doing one color and then stopping and then doing another color doesn't matter if it kind of goes over each other a little bit so let's just pop those pastels to one side let's remove this piece of kitchen paper and then we can work on the other piece underneath and what I'm going to do I've got two bottles I've got one with just isopropyl alcohol and one with water and these are those travel spray bottles that you can get from um, the pharmacy or even the supermarket I think and I'm going to go in and I'm first of all I'm going to spray with water I don't even know whether it makes a difference which way around you do this. But I'll go in with water and then I'm going to go in with alcohol. And then I'm going to go in with my heat tool. that's just to dry that and because you've used alcohol it actually dries really quickly and the beauty of this technique is you can play around with the different types of cardstock this is straightforward ordinary basic white it's not the thick basic white you can use the shimmery white um, and you can use watercolor cardstock and the brilliant thing about this is you can actually go back in once it's dried and you can add a bit more color to different areas you can layer the color up you could layer it up and have some yellow in there I think I've layered it up actually on my original and put some of that grape in the middle just over the top there just to darken that middle bit look and then we can go back in with the water and what happens is it sort of just dilutes and and makes all of the pastels just merge and soften and it's lovely it's just such a nice effect just a bit of experimentation really and then you've got a lovely colored centerpiece um, for your card now the second the third sorry technique I'm going to show you I find the trickiest I'm just going to make sure my fingers are actually clean and they're not so I'm just going to just bear with me I've got a damp sponge to one side that I use just for cleaning fingers that's a little tip for your craft room I keep a damp sponge in a ziploc bag you can use um, a face cloth but I tend to find that the face cloths don't stay as damp and those sponges do just to clean your fingers off I don't like wet wipes they clog up the drains um, so for this technique we're going to use Versamark again and I'm going to use a different um, stamp set I'm going to go in with the Biggest Wish stamp set which I absolutely love and I'm going to stamp Happy Birthday and I'm going to um, mount these on blocks. I'm just thinking, sort of quietly to myself, whether to do the happy first or the birthday first. So, let me just pop, I'm running out of blocks. So here we go. Happy birthday. Now this is a photo polymer stamp set, so I will need my stamp and pierce mat underneath. So when we have photopolymer, we don't have any of the sponge underneath the rubber, like the red rubber stamps. So we have to provide some sponge and we use a stamp and pierce mat. Um, so this technique, I'm going to use um, a sponge dauber 
and I'm going to go back to scraping off some of the uh, pastel onto a piece of either silica mat or craft mat. And I'm going to stamp the happy with Versamark. And then I'm going to pounce the colour. I'm just going to pick the colour up with the dauber and I'm going to just pounce the colour. Using the dauber. I didn't actually use this technique on this card, but I was thinking of a third technique. I have used this technique with a flower image and it works really gorgeously with a flower image. And I hadn't actually used it with lettering. So here we go, live on air for the first time. And you just keep pouncing that. And again, this door bird previously had ink on it. Um, but it's not affecting the use of, and you can see I've not, you know, I'm just gently sort of tapping the ink onto the sticky, uh, the pastel onto the sticky ink. So that's another way of using your pastels. And then to clean my dauber, I will probably, let me just have a look, use my cloth. And that just removes that pastel from the sponge and the sponge will live to be used another day. I'll just give that a blow and then I'm ready to stamp my birthday and I'm going to stamp birthday using Memento Black. And for my next trick I'll try and get this beautifully lined up. <laughs> the best laid plans. And as this is um, a felt pad and not a sponge pad, I'm actually, instead of just lightly tapping, I'm actually tapping fairly firmly and that's a capillary action. It brings the ink to the surface of the pad, like patting a um, sandcastle. So I'm just going to try my best not to get my head in shot and get this straight. And let's see what success or not I have. Oh yes, happy with that. It's perfectly usable. And I'm actually going to fussy cut this sentiment. So apologies if fussy cutting is not your thing. And I'm just going to get rid of my craft mat because it's still got some loose pastel on. So I'm just going to pop that to one side so that I don't get green pastel everywhere. So yes, yeah, so fussy cutting my sentiment. I'm going to start with the straight edges. So I'm going to go straight down. I'm just going to use my small snips as well. And I'm just going to chop that excess off. And now I'm going to just make my own edge and I'm going to turn the card with my left hand. Keeping my scissors fairly open. And I'm just sort of making the making the shape as we go. I'm just going to get rid of some of that excess there. straight across the top there. I might just take that a little bit. No, I think we'll leave that as it is. So there we go, that's the third technique of using the um, fabulous, in my opinion, stamping up soft pastels. Such a versatile um, product, I think. You can use them for all, and there are so many other ways um, of using them. I've seen a brilliant, let's just assemble this card while I talk. 
I've seen a brilliant way of um, of using them to make a marbled background where you scrape the pastel onto the surface of water and then drop your cardstock on top and I was going to demonstrate that as well and then I just thought well three techniques to be going on with is actually pretty good so I'm just going to pop this strip on the back let's see whether we've got that straight because I've used Tombow we've got a bit of wiggle room and then we can put that down as a whole layer And I hope that you've enjoyed this demonstration with the soft pastels and it encourages you to have a look in the catalogue. If you've not got them already, have a look in the catalogue. I will show you which page they're on. Um, and consider adding them to your craft room because they're really quite a lovely, versatile piece of kit. I'm just going to add a bit of gold ribbon and this is the... Uh, shimmer ribbon in gold I think this is in the annual catalogue as well and I'm just going to tie it round now then let me have a big block or two just to hold that steady for me and I'm just going to guess how much I need let's go for it And because I'm tying it all the way around, I'm not worried about where I'm actually finishing off. So, I might be better that way up because those blocks are in my way. But just anchor your piece of cardstock so it's not slipping around your desk. So to tie a nice pretty bow, I usually start with it nice and flat and I do a north and a south. So I've got a north and a south tail. And I bring my south tail up and wrap my north tail around clockwise poking that loop through the hole and then pulling east and west and that makes a nice bow that you can then faff with pulling the tails and tightening it up until you're happy and bow tying is all about the faffing at the end I think we're equal there I'll just tidy those ends and we can then position the bow where we want because it's gone all the way around so we can actually I definitely want it to sort of cover the seam between the white and the gold stripes but I probably want it to be about there now sticking down this big die cut piece we have options when we die cut we do have some sticky sheet that we can use on the back to make this into a sticker but what i like about this piece is actually if you just stick it in the middle then you get these leaves so if i just drop that down you can see what i mean you get some dimension with the leaves curling up so the way that i stick this one down is there actually are some small areas where there's enough room just to pop a little blob of liquid glue so just look for those bigger areas and just take care with your glue not to squeeze too much out all at once and just look for those areas where there's a little bit more surface but don't don't be tempted to stick your glue right round the edges and then making sure you've got it in the orientation that you want you can drop it down and just press it and the warmth from your fingers will help that to stick down. And I think that that looks really pretty with the edges just sticking up. And I'm going to stick my sentiment down with a couple of dimensionals. And that is that card done. So three techniques using the soft pastels. And then I'm just going to jump into the catalogue and recap the products that we've used very quickly before finishing off so we'll just pop that sentiment I always like my sentiments and my image um, to sort of have a connection so I didn't want to bring my sentiment too 
far down and let it be right you know have a, a lot of gapping around the sentiment i like my images and um sentiments to actually have some sort of connection so there's a bit of a the touching there um okay so we're done i'll just clear my blocks away out of the way and have some space and bring in that other card so there we go they're the two cards we've created today and i'm just going to grab the annual catalogue and I'm going to just share with you where those pastels are they're in towards the back in with the colouring um, colouring products it's not where the ink is just over the page there so assortments and bundles and there's something I want to point out so let's go back to the colour collections and we're f we're familiar with our colour families and these item numbers are for the individual items so an individual stamp pad and you've got the individual item numbers for each individual colour but you may want to have the whole family as a collection and it wasn't until a customer pointed it out to me the other day, you've got to turn over two pages before you find the assortments for the mixed packs of coloured card and the stamp ink pad bundles, the ink refills and the stamp and write uh, markers as well. Um, but this is where you'll find the watercolour pencils and the soft pastels assortment and they're £8.25 and pence which I just think is fantastic value because these pastels will last you a long time. They're not going to run out um, for a long, long time. I've scraped off quite a lot from some of these already, as you can see, and used them in a variety of different projects, but they will last a long time. So for £8.25, I think that that represents excellent value. So that's where they are on page 126 and the item number is 154585 from the annual catalogue 2021 to 2022. The other thing that we used here was um, on the following page on page 128 and that was the decorative masks assortment and you get um, now it was the basic patterns I believe because there were two different sets let me have a look was it the basic patterns no, it was plenty of patterns. So that's the new set and that's the one that's pictured here. Um, basic patterns is the one that's pictured here, but they haven't actually pictured all of the masks. They've In the little picture, you can see an example of the different patterns in the actual kit. Same here. So you get four masks and the item number for the one that we've used today is 155. Five three one five 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 three, and they're seven pounds and fifty pence for the pack. And then I will just show you the bundle that we've used, which is artistic expressions or expressions in ink. So I've used the stamp set, and I've used the matching dies, and I've used the ephemera pack. And the ephemera pack um, is six pounds fifty. So that expressions in ink ephemera pack with the gold die cuts and the sequins is £6.50 and the item number for that is 155465 and the stamp set and dies are available as a bundle for £49.50 or stamp set on its own is £22 um, the dies are actually let me have a look oh the dies are in the back if you just wanted the dies on their own why you would I'm not sure but if you didn't want the actual stamp set, then the dies on their own are. <laughs> Let me just grab them. Oh, there they are. £33 on their own are available as a bundle, saving 10% at 49.50. Now, if you wanted everything, including the designer series paper, the bundle, and the ephemera, you can get the whole thing for £70. And that is just one item number if you wanted the whole suite. And that's 155459. So that's everything that we've used today, apart from the ribbon, which is in the annual catalogue, and the different inks that I've used.
and hopefully you've enjoyed my demonstration of how to use those soft pastels without feeling a bit worried about them or a bit scared and just for eight pounds i think that they're really worth getting for your craft room so here we go i'm going to turn my camera around oh i could see a couple of other people have jumped on hi helen and hi lorna fab i'm going to spin my camera around just say a few goodbyes and a few other little messages hello i'm here i'm back in the room <laughs> so thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed that demonstration of how to use the pastels um and helen i'm not sure when you joined me but if when i've um when i've published the video to facebook and i will publish it to youtube as well um, if you want to watch back, because I know that you're fairly new to stamping up and new to stamping, I did um, carefully demonstrate how to actually stamp if you're a beginner. So it might be worth you watching. Um, now, a couple of other messages. I think I'm just going to have to check my calendar because I'm a bit naughty today. I haven't been logged into my stamping up. Um, so yes, today is the... It is the 11th today, isn't it? Yes, it's the 11th today. So today we have another Paper Pumpkin released. And this will be the last one for this year, I think. Um, and it's called the Hope Box. Paper Pumpkin Hope Box. Now, if you've not seen Paper Pumpkins before, I'm just going to hold this one up. This is the Expressions in Ink, which is still available. It's an all-inclusive kit. And it makes, I think from memory, nine cards and you get the stamp set, a little ink spot um, and pre-cut cards. Now the um, Hope box, I want to say box of hope. Maybe it is a box of hope. I've only seen demonstrated on video because the Paper Pumpkin Global Release Kits are available to demonstrators at exactly the same time as they are available to customers. So we don't get to pre-order them to demonstrate them prior to customers being able to order them. So if you're interested in the Hope Box Paper Pumpkin, then hop across to my um, main website and you will be able to see the contents of that box on my website under the kits heading. I have seen it demonstrated on a video, but I haven't actually been able to order it until today. Um, and I'm not sure whether I will order that one or not, because I'm going to now switch my focus a bit more onto the big C word. And I'm going to be looking at Christmas for the next few weeks, I'm sure, um, with a few scatterings of maybe some flowers in between, just because I'm a bit bad humbug about Christmas. When it gets to December, I might feel it, but hey... <laughs> <laughs> that's me so yes that's the other news so the paper pumpkin global release hope box is available from today and i think that's all the stamping up news that i have to tell you all i'm just um oh it's the 12th today is it the 12th today it is the 12th so that was available from yesterday thank you helen <laughs> so that was available from yesterday um, so yes, hop along and have a look at that on my um, website. It's because we always release everything on a Tuesday and that was just released on a Monday just to fox me because I haven't done my homework this week. And I'm just distracted because I can see Pam's on as well. Hi Pam, over there in the US, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, we'll love the Hope Box, of course, because in America, the Paper Pumpkin Kits are an, um, a monthly subscription box. So Pam, my lovely friend Pam in America, will already have had her Hope Box. Um, so yes, from the imagery, I think there must be some butterflies involved and I'll probably see it and order it because I do love a butterfly. <laughs> so anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. Remember that this video will be saved on my Facebook page and published to my YouTube channel. So if you do want to watch it back again and replicate any of the cards or pick up any of the tips that I've given you throughout this demonstration, then it will be there. Um, thank you for sandboxing that we get the paper. Well, we've had quite a few this year, so maybe they're just testing the market a bit better, Pam. Good on you. Thank you. <laughs> So if you are watching on YouTube and you have enjoyed um, the demonstration, please do give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. If you have any more comments, you can comment on Facebook, 
um, you can comment on YouTube once it's published and I will reply to all comments, any queries, any questions. Um, I do keep popping back. So thanks once again for watching. You know what you need to do now and that's go and craft. Create some beautiful things. Whatever you create, I'm happy to share them using my Izzy's Crafty Beehive group page. So please do send me photos and I will always publish them or you can join the Crafty Beehive and you can publish your own photographs. So let's keep crafting, let's stay safe and let's just enjoy ourselves. Lots of love for now. Bye everyone.